This edition of the Riddler Report is brought to you by... Nine states have passed FFAs, Alaska, Arizona, Idaho, Kansas, Montana, South Dakota, Tennessee, Utah, and Wyoming. Uh, New Hampshire needs this too, okay? Big Tenth Amendment issue. Of the nine states, and this is my only crow for Wyoming, but uh, they deserve this prop, only Wyoming has enforcement powers against the feds who arrest, who try to arrest someone making their own guns in Wyoming, okay, and keeping them in Wyoming. And listen to this. this, this has real teeth. And this, this, this could have been any state, but, but happily it was Wyoming that did this, and maybe other states will do it too. This is Wyoming law. Any official, agent, or employee of the, of the United States government who enforces or attempts to enforce any act, order, law, statute, rule, or, or regulation of the United States government upon a personal firearm, a firearm accessory, or ammunition that is manufactured commercially or privately in Wyoming and that remains exclusively within the borders of Wyoming shall be guilty of a misdemeanor and upon conviction shall be subject to imprisonment for not more than one year and a fine not more than two thousand dollars and then the uh, attorney general is activated on this too Uh, nine FFAs thank you yeah real teeth okay it it shows where where we've come you know when state governments are starting to assert their rights against the federal government I mean that's getting pretty interesting and as libertarians or anarchists especially I would I would suggest let's not throw out that baby with the bathwater let's use whatever we can to roll back first federal oppression and then we can work on state oppression at the same time or in a different way well please do not touch my camera that's assault but you know you've got a state attorney generals filing suit okay against the federal government on this, on a Tenth Amendment issue. Um, that's big. We, we need to not ignore that. We need to support that. Because if we had a Jeffersonian republic, which we did briefly, but if we had that again, that would go a long way in taking you know, off a lot of stress and anxiety and just the hassles of this life. It wouldn't be perfect from a minarchist or anarchist standpoint, but it would be 80% there. Okay. So ironically, the state governments can be a part of reducing federal tyranny. And that's something to uh, not only be aware of, but to encourage, I think. So uh, I I would propose that the people of the FSP make that an initiative to get their own uh, Firearm Freedom Act passed in New Hampshire. The language is quite clear. Nine states have done it. Uh, This is not controversial. Has Has it come up for a vote? I'm not aware of this. Yes? Anybody know if it's even come up for a vote? Yeah? Okay. Okay, the uh, biggest interstate commerce clause, Tenth Amendment battle right now, no more. Silent no more. is Obamacare. Okay, this is a very interesting case from a constitutional perspective. Now, the feds, since the 1940s, have been able to prohibit uh, our activities based on it it affects interstate commerce uh, the 1941 case of um, Filburn it was a wheat grower decided not to abide by you know federal mandates during the war about growing uh, wheat at a certain rate a certain price grew his own like he pleased sold it for what he wanted to and uh, got fined 120 bucks and took it all the way to the Supreme Court saying I have a right to grow my own wheat Interstate Commerce Clause doesn't, you know, shouldn't intrude on my right to grow my own wheat. And the Supreme Court enacted a new doctrine called the Substantial Effects uh, Doctrine. Basically, the fact that you grow your own wheat means you're no longer buying wheat in the interstate market, so you're affecting the interstate market for wheat. I'm not kidding, okay? (laughs) You affect it. So, yeah, we can thus regulate it. They've used that, the FDR court has used that since the 40s and just stacked on and stacked on and stacked on. That's how the whole uh, Gun-Free School Zone Act of uh, 96, I think it was, uh, was passed. Because, you know, school children getting shot with guns, you know, affects interstate commerce. So, therefore, we can, you know, instead of three federal laws, you know, originally, there, there are hundreds. So, Scalia 
is the only justice really that's starting to go, you know, what it affects it's interstate commerce. I mean, that could be anything. He said that in U.S. v. Prince or Lopez back in 96. He's like, it may be time to like revisit this. I know I'm the only one saying it, but you know, eventually we, we may need to revisit this because the, theoretically this is just limitless. And the limit, limitless um, uh, example of this has come forth with Obamacare. Instead of merely prohibiting us from doing something, Obamacare, through the individual mandate, seeks to force us to do something, to pay for something against our will. That's never really happened under uh, Commerce Clause legislation. This is tectonic. <laughs>